Let's start this week with a fact. Joe Biden is the 46th president of the United States of America. Now, I understand that me saying this puts a smile on some people's faces. Some people are angry and other people like me are just seeing another transition of power that isn't really going to change much. When I talk about changing much, yes, he is night and day different from Trump as far as the way he communicates with people, the way he's going to work with Congress, get things done. And he's the man we need right now in this pandemic and the way this country is just so dysfunctional. Now, when I say he's the man we need right now, this is not me jumping on, get my pom poms and cheering for Joe Biden, even though I personally like the man. When it comes to politics, we need to take a step back, breathe, and judge them on what they do. I'm talking from a place of hope. The man just got in office yesterday. He's scrambling to get bills passed to help us through the pandemic and people that what they need to survive through the rest of this mess, get the vaccines out. And it's also trying to take care of the civil unrest that was never addressed this summer and the insurrection that happened. It's just a whole laundry list of stuff that he has to get done. I'm willing to let the man do his job. Now, I remember when Trump first got in, a bunch of conservatives said, hey, let the man do his job. We don't need to judge him on day one. Here we are now. He was judged on his job. The people spoke. And Joe Biden is now president. It is what it is. The question I have are, what are the American people going to do now? Think about that for a second. What are you going to do now? Are we just going to spend four years just blindly bashing Democrats, blindly bashing Republicans, um, pretending that libertarian philosophy doesn't mean anything without even listening to it. Is that what we're going to continue doing? Because if we keep going down this path, nothing's going to change. We're going to do all the things we need to do for the pandemic and emergency measures, but what's going to happen when the bills for long-term progress need to be passed? And they can't get done because we're just throwing mud at each other. I'm talking about the infrastructure bill that Trump promised. Nothing happened with that. The bridges aren't magically going to fix themselves. The dams aren't magically going to fix themselves. We're still in the same mess with a ticking time bomb waiting to happen. We are so worried about foreign terrorism coming here and destroying us that we didn't stop to recognize what's happening in our own country. My philosophy has always been when in times of strife, when people aren't working, when the government isn't working for them, when their jobs are disappearing, when they feel there's no hope, we, we get these violent clashes. Now we can look at the Black Lives Matter rally. Yes, it wasn't a violent protest. But we can't ignore what happened when the sun went down and the protests were over. We, we can't ignore that expression of violence and destruction on the streets. When we talk about the Capitol insurrection, we can't just blanketly say, hey, it was Trump supporters trying to take over the government. It's simply not that easy. Because it, some of them were there to peacefully protest. Others planned and executed an attack on the United States of America. When we break down these things and we talk about how could this country can heal, it's not an easy conversation of saying, hey, Trump supporters are wrong. Or saying, hey, Democrats are hypocrites because they didn't talk about the BLM riots. We have to address the pain. That's what it all comes down to. We can't just run around taking our pound of flesh and pretending that people are just going to fall in line with our thinking and everybody's going to follow what everybody else says. That's the beautiful thing about America. We don't 100% agree on anything. 
But the difference is in the past when things like 9-11 happened and it was someone from another country that attacked us, we all banded together and George W. Bush had a 90% approval rating. And we simply said, hey, do what you got to do. Here in 2021, what we have is people absorbing an attack on United States of America differently. You got some people on the right that didn't want to address that the same that there are people carrying the Trump flag that plan to attack the United States of America. You know, it's it's okay to say that it was a peaceful protest and there were some rogue elements in it that did damage to our country. That doesn't eliminate the whole Trump movement. Now, on the same note, I'm going to sit here and say that Trump played with fire to build his political brand, and he might have thought in his head that a ceremonial procedure to um, certify the votes in Congress can be flipped to overturn the election. He might have thought that. I'm not going to argue that. But it was dumb. It was blatant lies that were said over and over again by his surrogates. <laughs> Riled people up, and it gave these insurrectionists the cover they needed to do the damage to our capital. With everything that happened, I am happy that Congress was able to do the work of the people, even though a few hours before they took that vote, there was a direct attack to stop them from doing the work of the people. And now we're still in the same mess. Trump's gone, but we're still in the same mess. You still have folks that are just hanging on to the belief that the election was stolen. At some point, you have to accept reality. Not because you want to, but because you want your country to move forward. There's a reason why we have different branches of government. You had all this ample time to turn your energy from this one man to the Georgia election to get people out to vote, but you were stuck in the narrative of the election was stolen, the vote's rigged, I don't care, I'm not going to come out to vote, I'm not going to be vocal about it, and guess what? We got a blue presidency, we got a blue House of Representatives, and we got a blue Senate. Is it the doomsday scenario that popped in your head when I said these things? Absolutely not. The Senate's 50-50. And contrary to popular belief, there's different sections of the Democrat Democratic Party. So all it takes is one Democrat to defect. So all these people are saying, oh, they have all blue government. They're going to take away our guns. They're going to take away our religion. They're going to pass all these draconian laws. That's not going to happen. We already saw it happen in Virginia with all their 2A protests. And guess what? It was affecting Democrats that stopped it from passing. So what are we going to do? Four years ago, I told the Democrats to buck up, get your people out to vote, get around all of these laws that are stopping people from voting. And guess what? They sucked it up. Yeah, they were still running around saying, not my president, but they sucked it up. They got it done. And now the Senate, the House and the presidency are blue. They're so busy trying to get one man power, they lost power all the way across. This is your opportunity, America. This is a new beginning. Are we going to do things differently this time? Because now we're at a crucial moment with our debt and a do-nothing Congress that we need a negotiator in the White House, a proven negotiator, because as much as you hate it that Joe Biden has all these years in government, He's the man we need to negotiate all the stuff that we can't get done in a dysfunctional Congress. So the choice is yours. We need to start loving each other again. I know it sounds hippiest, but we got to start loving each other again. We can't just run around saying, I told you so, or not my president. That's not the moment we're in. The moment we're in is climbing out of a hole. Whether Whether you see it or not, we're in a hole. We're in a hole emotionally. We're in a hole physically. We're in a hole mentally. The choice is yours. My name is Kyle Finney King. Thank you for attending my Jeep chat.